I'm going to jump actually to the, uh, to the Old Testament and just give a, a, a thumbnail sketch of a story that uh, actually Mario Murillo was the first one that helped me see this many years ago. And it might be new to you, so just bear with me and you'll understand, I hope, why. I'm using it as an example of the hope that we have, right? Christ in you, the hope of glory, the way we live our lives. Is life difficult? Yes. Even, you know, any, any version of it you want. But then to also live a godly life in a secular world is difficult. Right? It's not the shortcut way. The shortcut way is just to go along with whatever the world is telling you to do. But, boy, you pay for that later. Believe me when I tell you. So nobody's saying it's easy. But we are getting equipped and empowered by a supernatural presence in our lives that makes it easier if we submit to it. All right, so here we are. Josiah was eight years old. This is 2 Kings 22. When he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years, he did what was right in the sight, in the eyes of the Lord, sorry, and followed completely the ways of his father David. So, right, he's a descendant of David. He's in that kingly line. And it says he followed completely. That's, that's a big deal. Because many of the other kings did not, even though they were related to David. He didn't turn aside to the left or to the right. And Hilkiah the high priest, this is verse 8 in that same chapter, and she said to Shaphan, I found a book of the law in the house of the Lord. If you remember, they were doing renovation work because it was a mess. And as they were digging through the rubble in the temple, they found the book of the law. And it says, Shaphan the scribe showed the king. Who was the king? Josiah showed the king. Hil Hilkiah, a high priest, gave, has given me a book, and Shaphan read it before the king. And it happened when the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. Right? Anybody can relate to that? I see some heads nodding. When you first became a Christian and you read what the Bible was telling you and you hadn't read it before, it's like, oh boy, i got to make some changes. <laughs> I never learned that rule. I didn't know that was a, a violation. And, and all of a sudden, he tears his clothes, which was a way of saying, I need to repent. This is a bad situation. I'm the king. And if what was just read is true, that means I've got to make some very big changes in my life. Now, he doesn't ask us. The Lord won't ask us to do that in our own strength because you can't do it in your own strength. The reason it's a stronghold is because it's controlling your behavior, but God doesn't want it in there. So we don't just fix it, right? We kill it. <laughs> you have to crucify that thing. You have to take it to the cross. And not to discourage you, but he said, "Go." you have to pick up your cross daily. Not his cross daily. My cross daily. So there's probably something in there that could still benefit me if, if it goes. Hallelujah. I know that's not a good hallelujah kind of verse, but once you start to realize the changes that get made through Holy Spirit living in you, you do. It's like, okay, God, I'm okay with you showing me what has to go next. Sorry, I'll go finish this part. So something was read in that book that made him tear his clothes, which that he was grieved and he had to repent for something. And I just said, well, here in, in 1 Kings 13, all the way back, many chapters before what we just read, I just said, what did he read? And it's speculation, right? But this could have been what he read because it was many chapters before that. So it's a different scene many years before. Behold, a man of God went from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord, and Jeroboam, who's a wicked king, stood by the altar to burn incense. And then this prophet cried out against the altar the word of the Lord. You picturing it? So a man of God comes, we don't get his name, he sees decadent behavior going on in the kingdom, and now he's going to prophesy a word against this idolatry, basically what was happening. And this prophet says, O oh, altar, altar, thus says the Lord, behold, a child, Josiah by name, shall be born to the house of David. And on you he shall sacrifice the priests of the high places who burn incense on you, and men's bones shall be burned on you. <laughs> That's not a popular word, is it? <laughs> so prophets are courageous people because they have a fear of the Lord. Much greater fear of the Lord than the fear of man and what man can do against me. And, and if you know that the Lord is telling you this and you don't do it, he's not real happy about that. Right? So we have to be obedient to what God is saying. So now here's this young man who's the king, and he's reading what was written, and it specifically names him in the Bible that he would be the one that would tear down these altars. 
That gives him this mission statement for his life. And when you come out of the grave, you're, you're resurrected into a new mission statement for your life. And that older version of you that was corrupted had to go. It's not fixed. It's crucified. And then we come up resurrected on the other side. And I'm not trying to scare anybody about any of this stuff because you really are a new creation. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old things pass away and all becomes new. Even though initially... Like, let's just use guys and cursing as an example, right? This is something that happens all the time. A guy gets saved, and now that he's in, in with other believers, he might drop an F-bomb once in a while, but honestly, not on purpose, don't even realize they're doing it, right. right? And you would say, well, that's not a good thing, but you don't want to get legalistic with people either. It is not a good thing. It, it's a sin, but if you're only saved two days, wow. you know, let's just cut somebody a, a break and just put an arm around their shoulder and say, hey, let me just show you. <laughs> That's a violation. <laughs> I know you don't realize, but you've got to ask the Lord to help you not to do that. And you're not disqualified because something like that happens, but you still carry some old habits with you into the kingdom. But nobody here is going to judge you, and if they do, you let us know, okay? Because everybody here is one of the inmates in the asylum, all right? Like, we all have something that we're, we have to apologize for on a pretty regular basis. And if I start calling people out for stuff, like... I know you probably heard me say it, but there's new people. Jerry Kaufman, I always think of him. He was on, in the Bronx, and he got saved out of heroin, and it was a really rough area. Prostitutes right on the street in front of his church. And people used to get offended when the prostitutes would come in because they obviously were, were, it was during their working hours because they weren't wearing much clothes. And the, and the religious people were getting all offended. He's like, what do you think? He's going to clean them up and then bring them in? That's not how it works. Once the Holy Spirit comes in, they don't want to do that anymore. So who are we to judge them? If they're coming in, that was the, the sign that they wanted to change. And look, all I'm saying is just think of Josiah. Think of reading your name in the book. Maybe it never happened to you yet, but believe God as you study it, your, your mission is going to be ever clearer of how you should live the rest of your life. Because you can't look in the rearview mirror and say, oh, look at all the mistakes I made. I'm such a wretch. Why would he love me? Stop. Don't say things about you that he's not saying about you. He's saying, unconditionally, I love you. 24-7, you come to me, I will answer. Yeah. Never off duty. He doesn't need a vacation. He's the master of the universe. He's always open for business if you want to talk to your father. I'll finish here. This, is, um, this was the, the, the prophet that Huldah, the prophetess, gave to Josiah after that. We're back in 2 Kings 22 now. He had read about himself in the Bible, and now we're back in the present day where he has now started to implement what he read about himself, tearing down those altars. And she says, because your heart was tender. We could stand for this part because this is, we're going to finish it up. And, and it would be good if you just put your heart, hand on your heart. All right, because this is, this is really kind of like instructions for us too, right? Because he just, I believe, read his name in the book, and that put him on a mission. And he was going to tear down those altars. And, you know, Lord, help me in my heart to have my mission, to know what you want me to do. It's not nothing, okay? Can we just say that? I know that's not good grammar, but the mission is not to sit around and do nothing. He wants us to do something for him but he wants it to be in a zone where you're very effective at it because then you'll flourish. So he's because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before the Lord. So that could be a good prayer for us. Lord, give me a tender heart that I might be humbled before you. She says, when you heard what I spoke against this place, this is the Lord speaking to him through this woman. When you heard what I spoke against this place, against this place and against its inhabitants, that they would become a desolation and a curse. And you tore your clothes and wept before me. I also heard you, says the Lord. Surely, therefore, I will gather you to your fathers, and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace, and your eyes shall not see all the calamity which I will bring on this place. All right? So all we have to worry about is our assignment. Yes, we're in body of Christ. Yes, it's not just king of kings. It's the body of Christ. We don't put down other churches that do things differently than us. We're all doing this work together. Not a cult. I get it. Not a cult. But Christian people, stop messing with God's bride. If they're another church and they believe in the Bible and people are getting saved, don't can't say, well, you know, I, I don't even want to say it. It's not right. Pray that they have a revival. And if, 
and your way of thinking is right, then the Lord will show them. Maybe he'll show you something too, amen? We all can have that. So let's just say it out loud together. Lord, give me a tender heart that I could be open to your ear. I'm sorry, your voice. Thank you, Lord. I want to know my mission and feel like I'm empowered through your spirit to accomplish everything you have for me to do. All right, just pause for a minute and, and ask the Lord to show you not all the steps, the next step. What's the next thing he wants you to do? Maybe you have to go forgive somebody. Maybe you have to lay your offering down and go make right with somebody else because it's going to hold you back. Your prayers could be hindered in a situation like that. So Lord, we're just grateful that you love us and you want to use us Help us take the limitations that we put on ourselves off and have that tender heart that Josiah had.